Okay, welcome back to EMVS 344. This one we're going to talk about scales, distances, and areas. Now, if you are taking a remote sensing course with me, then you are already also going to know about scales. So this is just a repeat of that and just, um, just kind of a refresher. So I'm going to try not to go through this too super fast, um, just because then it Otherwise, it is be totally a review, but it's not meant to be that. It's supposed to be a new concept in this class. So what is a map scale? It, we have map scales to reduce this huge earth onto a map or a piece of paper or a digital surface. Um, we can't just have everything like true to size. So we always use a map scale and the map scale needs to be consistent as, as consistent as we possibly can. So it's actually an actual definition is that it's a ratio between map distance and the corresponding distance on the Earth's surface. So now we're looking at what is what the distance between two points on the map is has to relate to the distance on the Earth's surface. And it gives us this nice ratio. So there are three ways to express a scale. There is something called a unit equivalent. So that's like saying, you know, one centimeter equals a thousand centimeters. There is a unitless ratio, which is what you guys would be most common and what is most common to everybody. And that would be saying that it is, you know, one to 10,000. And then there's the representative fraction, which is just written as a fraction. So it uses a slash instead of a colon. So the unit list ratio is usually the most common one that we use. Um, it's one unit on the map equals to so many units on the ground. The units have to be the same. So if I'm using inches, I use inches on both sides. If I'm using kilometers, which would be really weird, but <laughs> you wouldn't use kilometers on a map, but it would be kilometers on both sides or meters or centimeters. Usually it's centimeters in Canada here. So a scale of one to 10,000 means that there's one centimeter or one unit on the map and that equals 10,000 units on the ground. Or in this case, one meter on the map equals 10,000 meters on the ground. If I use inches, one inch on the map equals 10,000 inches on the ground. If I use one length of a hot dog on a map, it's going to be the length of 10,000 hot dogs on the ground. It doesn't matter what kind of unit you use. So for example here, this building it's showing here, we can measure it, and on the map it's going to be a certain distance, but also on the um, on the ground it's going to be that the distances are going to stay the same. We are going to shorten it down to one unit on the map is so many units on the ground. There's the unit equivalent. So you use two different units. We see this actually on a lot of different um, on land surveying maps like for example township plats and you'll see for example like one inch is equal to so many chains um, so that that's an example and here for another example is we have 10 centimeters equals a, a thousand meters so 10 centimeters on the map is a thousand meters on the ground or one inch on the map is equal to one foot on the ground is another one so the representative fraction, and it's expressed as a fraction, as I mentioned. So instead of a colon, we use a slash. It means the same thing. So the map distance is 1, for example, and the, the ground distance is 10,000. So that comes down to this representative fraction equation, which we're going to be using to do all of our calculations. So that is going to be map distance over ground distance. And I'm going to be shortening it down to dm and dg. So dm over dg is always equal to this representative fraction. So I'm going to get you guys to think about this in terms of numbers. So a distance on a map is 121.43 millimeters. The scale of the map is 1 to 50,000. So we're trying to calculate the distance on the ground. So what is the distance on the ground in kilometers? So there's a, this is approaching in a different way than what I taught I teach in the remote sensing class, but we can take our distance on the the map and we can multiply it by the bottom part of this the fraction, and that's going to give us our distance on the ground, and then we convert it to kilometers. 
So 1 over 50,000 equals 121.43 millimeters over whatever the distance on the ground is. I suggest converting the units before you calculate, but um, make sure that they're the same. They always have to be the same units. So then we get into large scale versus small scale maps. So a large scale is when the objects are represented that are, they are large, so like 1 to 1,000 or 1 to 100. So this would be an example of a large scale map. So we can see a lot of the, um, the streets and we can kind of zoom in and we can see you know, some of the parking lot regions and everything at SAIT. A small scale map is where the objects are small. So the, look at all of Calgary. So we have the whole Calgary. We're not going to be able to see a lot of like objects because they were so zoomed out. So we're getting this kind of like uh, recovering a larger area, but we are seeing smaller objects. So it, 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 we consider that a small scale map. So that's like one to 50,000 or one to a million. So it shows you the difference between large and small. There is no boundary saying that at this level, this one's going to be large and this, this certain number is going to be small. That doesn't exist. But we can see here in this example that you know, there's obvious differences, so relative to each other. So if we want to determine a map scale, we need to find a map distance and we need to find a ground distance. So we actually have to use the representative fraction to determine that. So for example, the distance between two points, and it's the same two points on the map is 27 millimeters. The distance between those same points is 100 meters. So what is the map scale? The answer is we use our representative fraction of map distance over ground distance, and we get 1 over 3,704. What is key here is what you can see going on um, in this way. I like to use it as a cross multiply and divide. So we have one, one over S equals our D DM over DG. So S, we don't know, but ground distance, we can do cross multiply and divide. So we can go ground distance multiplied by one. So it'd be 100 times one divided by the 27 millimeters. So we, 27 millimeters, and that will give us 3,700 or 704. So that will be how we get that answer. And if we want to show it in a ratio, we go 1 to 3704. So another example, this is for you to try. So we have a distance between two stations on the ground is 51.30 or 329 meters. The two stations are represented on a map with a scale of 1 inch to 1,000 1, feet. So now you got to do some other unit conversions. So there's some unit conversions there. So I would suggest pausing this video here and working that out and giving it a try. So what is the distance measured between the two stations on the map? So we got the ground distance, we got the ratio. Now we need to figure out how big the map is. So we got to find the scale in a unit, unitless ratio. So right there, got to convert the thousand feet to inches. So 1,000 feet times 12 equals 12,000 inches. So 1 inch equals 12,000 inches, or 1 to 12,000. So we put it into our fraction, our representative fraction. So we have 5,000, or 5,000, 51.329 meters multiplied by 1, divide by 12,000. And that gives us this value in meters, or it's four, cent, four millimeters, 4.2 millimeters that we are going to have, show on the map. That's what we're going to see between the two. So distances itself, we can also use coordinates. So if we have X and Y coordinates of anything on the map, which would be, for example, in UTM coordinates, we can use distances. So we can use the Euclidean distance measurement where x1 is the, the x-coordinate of point 1, y1 is the y-coordinate of point 1, y2, or sorry, x2 is the x-coordinate of point 2, and y2 is the, the y-coordinate of point 2. <laughs> Get that right eventually. And then we would take the square root of that. So it's a Cartesian coordinate system. You cannot do this with latitude and longitude. It doesn't work the same way. 
So we have quadrants of one, two, three, four, labeled in such a way. And we have UTM coordinates, so station A, station B coordinates at each point. What is the distance between those points? So we can put it into our formula, which is looks like this. So we take the difference between x, x2 and x1, and then the difference between y2 and y1. We square them, and we take the square root of that answer, and we get a 126.194 meters. So to find areas, we have ground distance equals the map distance divided by the representative fraction. So what does this actually mean? So area is expressed in units squared, which means that our ground area squared is not showing up. So it is equal, there we go. Okay, is the distance of side one in ground units times the distance in side two in ground units, and that gives us the ground area. That's for a rectangle, right? So if an area of a rectangle measures 5 millimeters by 2 millimeters on the map, the map scale is 1 to 20,000. What is the area of the parcel in hectares? Well, we have 2 millimeters by 5 millimeters. So we can apply our math. We're going to convert it to ground units first. Don't do the math first because it gets really confusing otherwise. So 2 millimeters is, e is equal to 40 meters on the ground. 5 millimeters on the map is equal to 100 meters on the ground. Now we have ground units. Now we can calculate the area. So now we have 4,000 meters squared in area. Then we can convert it to hectares, which is 0 0.4 hectares. And that is the end of the slideshow for today. Um, and on as a refresher or review or just something totally new on how to do um, scale calculations and how to use scales to determine information on the ground.